Yo, what's up guys? It's Alex Room, and I got something awesome in store for you today. We're making vocal chop melodies in the style of Petite Biscuit and Kygo. And if you know those artists like I do, we're going for a nice, chill, mellow, really creative, melodically powerful, juicy vocal chop melody. And I'm going to show you how to make that. And I got a couple ways and a couple steps uh, to show you guys how to actually do that. So we're gonna get right to that, but before we do, I need your help, guys. I really, really, really need your help. Um, I've been making my content plan for this year, uh, for what kind of content I'm gonna be giving you guys and what kind of products I'm gonna be making for you guys as well. And I need your help in deciding what kind of content, what kind of videos I need to make for you guys on YouTube, what kind of stuff I need to put on my website, and I need your help. I need you to take a survey that I made. It's uh, available at alexroomsound.com. And so you can go on alexroomsound.com and click on take survey. So yeah, if you guys could take that survey for me, I would really, really, really appreciate it. It would help me out so, 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 so much. I love you guys. I just want to make stuff that makes you happy and that helps you in your music production career because nothing makes me happier than to help somebody else do this amazing thing which is make electronic music and whatever kind of music I love helping you guys so let's jump right into it we gotta make a vocal chop melody in the style of Petite Biscuit and Kygo these are two two interesting artists when it comes to vocal chops because it's a very like, they're just so slick and smooth with it. Um, but I think I got the answers to how we could get really close to doing it. So, uh, as you can see here, I wrote some notes. There's two steps, or three steps to uh, making a vocal chop melody in that style. So one thing we have to think about is the sound design of the vocal chop and the overall sound and, um, you know, power of the vocal chop. And what I found works is if you just scour the web. I like to use splice.com because you could really, you can use a lot of different types of acapellas to make this happen. You don't need a full song. You don't need a mastered stem. Um, you actually need a mellow vocal acapella. This could be a full song, a partial song, or it could be a simple phrase. Uh, but it's got to be mellow. And when I say mellow, I mean something that sounds like this. Taking, oh. Taking the pain away, away, away. Where you can hear the softness in the singer's voice. It could be a female voice or a male voice. Here's another mellow acapella here. And again, I'm just looking for softness. Didn't this is flex pitched, so it's in slow motion right now. Um, that's why it sounds like that, but you get the idea. Just soft. Um, uh, you want the singer to be using the soft end of their voice. If they're yelling or the acapella is heavily edited and processed and it's very sharp and piercing, uh, that acapella isn't going to give you a vocal chop melody in the style of Kygo or Petite Biscuit, Biscuit because Petite, <laughs> Petite Business, I always said. Um, you're looking for that chill vibe that just flows with a nice chill beat. So step one, find a mellow acapella. Check. We got two and I took them straight off of Splice and I'll explain why I have two in a second. Step two would be to transpose that acapella to the key of your song. However, if you're starting with the acapella and you haven't made the song yet, you're in a better position because you don't have to do this annoying step, which is transposing an acapella that's out of key into the key of your song. It's super annoying to have to do that. Uh, that's why I like to start with the acapella. However, we're not all perfect and we don't start with the perfect acapella all the time. So a lot of the times we have a beat or a song and we got to match the acapella to our song before we even get to chopping. So what I did um, is I'm going to show you how I would do step two because this is uh, I get stuck on step two a lot because I make songs and I don't plan out the acapellas I don't going to use uh, really well. So 
um, I get stuck with a song. Let's just say this is my song here. So we got a set of chords and some atmospheric sound there. Um, that works as a song. Let's just say that's my song. This is the chords. This is the key signature. The set of chords has a key signature, so that's all we need for this demonstration. Um, so I got to get my acapella, which is right here, to transpose into the key of this song. And the best way to do this, I'm telling you, is by ear. There's no easier way. There's uh, no easier plugins. You can look for tuning plugins. You can look for anything you want. Uh, but the best way to transpose is by ear. I didn't know what I was missing. So this, I already did this. I already have uh, scanned through it. But basically, you want to just transpose one semitone at a time. I didn't know until you find the key of the song. And mine happened to be uh, five semitones off. And then you get something like that. So that's step two, transposing to the key of your song. My other vocal acapella, which is right here, is um, already in key because I actually made these chords based on this, which was just so much easier. So let's listen to that one. Taking the pay away, away, away. away. Ooh, that's hot. I would totally make a little beat with that and just have funsies all night. But anyway, so once you get your acapella in key, step three is chop it up. I got two ways to sh <laughs> two ways. I got two ways to show you how to chop it up. This is the most important part because this is where Petite Biscuit and Kygo alike get their signature sound because they have this weird way of chopping vocals so that every time you hear these vocal chop melodies, you're like, hey, that's like Kygo does that or that sounds like Kygo or if Kygo actually made it, you're like, yeah, this is, a, this is a Kygo vocal chop melody or if Petite Biscuit made it, you're like, wow, that's really chill. This is why I fucking like him so um let's chop it up and like i said i got two ways to do it so way number one is easier for some people um it's more difficult for other people uh and me this isn't my preferred method but this is definitely the preferred method of more more people i believe because when i look up when i look this up on the internet how to do this like most people show you how to do it this way. So I'm going to take this and because I um, transpose, I just need to render it real quick in the new transpose position. And then you want to right click your acapella and we're basically going to have logic chop our acapella for us. So we don't have to chop it. All we'd have to do is rearrange. And you're going to right click it and convert to new sampler track or you're going to do whatever that is up arrow E or you come down to convert and do convert to new sampler track and then um, we're not going to do regions because this isn't uh, multiple regions it's just one and transient markers and I keep this clicked in I haven't figured out what this does yet but um, uh, I just keep it clicked in and your instrument name just name it whatever you want I don't know right now so we're just gonna call it that and trigger note range just to make your life easy I would mine by default was all the way down here and like on C negative 2 which is like if I had 150 keys on my keyboard that would be useful but um, I don't so I just did C3 so that this gives me the samples right in front of me on C3 of my keyboard. So if we do OK, it gives you this. Um, and all of these regions are little transient chops. It takes every noticeable transient, or yeah, every noticeable transient in this, like 
for example, it would chop this because it looks like a transient and it would give you that on a key. So watch this. And then you get like a mess of chops. That's fun. It's totally fun. That's like actually actual sampling in and of itself. That's how uh, people make things uh, with samplers, both hardware and software samplers, uh, where you basically take an audio file, you put it into the sampler, and it chops it up for you, and then you go nuts trying to make a melody um, and a beat, whatever it is that you want to do with that sampler. That's cool, but uh, I don't like it as much because I don't believe I I personally have as much control doing this because I'm not making the chops myself so that's gonna bring me to my next thing so like this is yeah you can make it this way but it's gonna take you some time to come up with the melody if you're just hitting your keys and seeing what logic has made for you me I like to make my own melodies by chopping it up myself and just working with the audio file and there are a good uh, number of producers who like to do this too and if you're in FL Studio I think you could use SliceX to do the same thing here but, take it, take it my bed. but let's try to make our own little melody this is my favorite way to do it because you can actually see the audio what you're working with and I like doing this visually So it's just going to be this, like a chop and move fast. Let me make sure I'm like using a mouse now because my trackpad broke. So I am like turtles, back to being turtle slow at this. And then you're just making a melody, just like you'd be making a melody with a synth. Do 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 do. So here's like a good example of just me looking at audio and saying let's try this and the weird things with the weird thing with vocal acapellas and chopping and vocal melodies is you're either going to get a hit or a miss at the end of your session here so I'm going to go with this I'm going to play it back and listen to my melody and say I like it or I don't it's a very very trial and error thing when you're doing things like this because nothing's exact because it's recorded audio so my recommendation to you is if you're trying to come up with a vocal chop melody is make like 10 of them make 10 different vocal chop melodies spend the time to come up with something that's worth listening to because you're like I said like it's gonna be a hit or miss So here we have the note that I wanted. Nice. What's it sound like? 
So that was a phrase, so I have a lot more ways than I would like. So to give you an example, like this is a melody that I could say, okay, I love the melody. Let's make this uh, differentiated over here. So we already have our first part of our melody here. So I'm just making the response now, and then we're gonna loop back. Let's see, this is not likely that we can do this, but TM, Let's see if we could borrow another chop. This is, like I said, it's not likely this is gonna work, because you want your chops to sound like the same person. No, I don't like that. So right there, that's like a decent little melody. I like the melody, but I'm gonna tell you what I think. And like, this is exactly how I do it. This is exactly how your uh, favorite producers do it. They take something like this and they listen to it and then they decide like, do I like this? What needs to change about it? Um, and then they figure out what needs to change about it. And they make a couple more drafts of vocal chop melodies and they pick the best one. Nobody in the world finds a vocal acapella and then chops it up and just, you know, and uses the first vocal chop melody that they create. That's so wrong. <laughs> like nobody's that special. Sometimes you can come, you can land on the best vocal chop melody if you um, just go at it. Sometimes that happens, but vocal chop melody is very chop trial and error. So you start making melodies make a bunch of them and then you pick the best one so let's listen to what we came up with i'm gonna put some reverb on it just to emulate what this would sound like um with reverb on it oh wait shit that's the same melody as the la so I messed that up. I didn't realize I just did the same melody. The song would be called Way. This is awesome. I love it. So it's a little repetitive. Uh, I would definitely have to change up this side here. I mean, I love it, but I mean, it depends what genre I'm going for. A specific genre, like something like uh, Petite Biscuit or Kygo, if I was really trying to go, in, go for something that they would do, I would make the words that you're hearing less repetitive. So obviously, 90% of what you're hearing here is the word way that's like kind of annoying 
So, um, yeah, I would go at it just a few more times, but I would do exactly that. Just trial and error, make a ton of vocal chop melodies, and then you'll come up with the best one. But there you go, guys. Um, that's how you do it. Nothing's magic. It all takes a little bit of work. Uh, but if this video helped you out, please leave a comment, like this video, and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate that from you guys. And if you could go take that survey as well, that would really, really help me out. I love you guys. Peace out.